this video we're going to talk about how to convert from polar to rectangular so from r theta to x y coordinates so i've got a couple examples we're going to work through first one says convert 5 comma 60 degrees from polar to rectangular coordinates so let's start out by just graphing this point uh, we whenever you're graphing polars just a reminder you go out the degrees so here's our 60 degree line and then you go out five from the center. So one, two, three, four, five. And you can kind of see on this graph, I have a polar superimposed on top of a rectangular grid. So you can kind of see the X, Y grid uh, placed underneath the polar grid. All right, so here's our point. And if you can kind of imagine the polar grid gone and just look at the X, Y grid, it looks like we're over two and something, and then we're up one, two, three, four and something. So I'm just gonna draw a little triangle here. That's a right triangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what are these X and Y coordinates? How far over and how far up? Well, uh, we know some stuff about triangles. First of all, we know that this length here is five, that hypotenuse is five. And we also know that this angle here is 60. And so to get the x coordinate, we can, I'm going to redraw this triangle over here. I'm going to figure out the x coordinate. And I know this is 5 and the angle is 60. Then I've got uh, adjacent and hypotenuse. So I can use cosine. Cosine of 60 degrees equals adjacent, which is x, over hypotenuse, in this case, which is 5. And so if I multiply by 5 on both sides, I get x equals 5 times the cosine of 60. Now, I picked a convenient example because I'm familiar with the unit circle. I know that the cosine of 60 is 1 half, so I get x equals 5 times 1 half, which is 2.5. So my x coordinate I know is 2.5. And then for the y coordinate, we are going to, I'll, I'll do it in green here, that's the opposite side. So it's going to be uh, sine. Sine is opposite and hypotenuse. Sine of 60 equals opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And so, once again, if we do 5 times the sine of 60, we get our y value. And so the sine of 60, we know, I'll kind of come over here so you can see it, uh, is going to be root 3 over 2. So we get 5 times root 3 over 2, which is y, so we get 5 root 3 over 2. If uh, you want a decimal approximation, all you have to do is bust out your calculator. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in, so that it turn on. There we go. Make sure I'm in degree mode. And I'm doing stuff with degrees. And I'm going to do uh, cosine, excuse me, sine of 60. Multiply that by 5. And I get 4.33. So 5 root 3 over 2 is 4.33. Or you could just type in 5 root 3 over 2. Just to prove to you that we did it right, there's 5 square root 3 divided by 2, and we get 4.33. So uh, in general, if we're converting from polar to rectangular coordinates, if we are given a polar, an r theta, and we need to come up with an xy, well, what did we do? We, let's see here, Click on it. there we go, our xy would be r times the cosine of theta, and then r times the sine of theta. So there's a little multiplier here. There we go. So in general, to convert from polar to rectangular, if you're given an r theta, you can get your xy by doing r cosine times theta and r sine theta. All right, so let's look at what if we're going the other way? What if I give you an x, y point, and I want you to tell me what is that in terms of r theta? Same kind of idea. 
chances are, if you pause the video, you could probably figure this out you know, if you're familiar with trigonometry. Um, and I encourage you to do that, and then you can kind of unpause it and see if you did it right. So what I'm going to first do is label this point negative 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we are. So this is point B right here. And it looks like it's pretty darn close to, let's see, this is 240 degrees. And we're out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're almost out 6 on that point. But not not exactly there. So let's figure out how close it is to 6 comma 240. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll just draw this triangle again. And what I need here is I need an R and I need a theta. Maybe I'll put a blank, fill in that blank later. And what I'm given is I'm given the x is negative 3 and the y is negative 5. So I've got this right triangle. If I have two sides of a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that missing side, which we'll call C. Actually, take that back. Let's use a better letter for this situation. We'll call it R. So I usually use C for the Pythagorean theorem, but we're going to use R here because we're dealing with the radius. So to figure out R, it's R squared equals negative 3 squared. And make sure you, if you're plug, plugging this into your calculator, you put the negative 3 in parentheses. Otherwise, it, it won't square the negative. Um, and then plus negative 5 squared. And so negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 5 squared is 25. So we get R squared equals 34. And then we square root both sides, and we get r equals the square root of 34. So that's our exact answer. If you're looking for, and 34 can't be broken down into any perfect squares. If you're looking for an approximate answer, we would do square root of 34, and I get 5.8. So uh, that's going to be my approximate radius. And we guessed it was around 6, and, and that's pretty much where it's at. It's 5.83. That's pretty close to 6. Okay, what about the theta, though? How do we figure out this angle right here? So we're given the opposite side, and we're given the adjacent side. So if we're going to use trig to figure this out, we can do inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. And if you're not sure where I got this, let me back up just a couple steps. Uh, we do tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And then if you're going to cancel out tangent, to cancel that out, you're going to do uh, the inverse tangent of both sides. So I'll do tangent inverse on the left and tangent inverse on the right. And I ran out of room. Let's squeeze it in. There we go. And then we end up with theta equals that, the tangent inverse of negative 5 over negative 3. Now, a lot of times you'll see this written in like other textbooks as arctan, or maybe even capital tan inverse. Um, and we'll talk about what the difference is in just a moment here. If you're familiar with principal values, then uh, you already know the answer. So let's uh, bust out our calculator and see what we get. So we're going to do tangent inverse, second tan of negative 5 divided by negative 3. And we get 59.03. Well, here's the problem. 59.03 is this angle right here. Obviously, to get to the blue one, we're not rotating 59.03. We're rotating much further. And so what this is is 180 plus 59.03. So with some of these problems, you're going to have to rotate uh, 180 degrees depending on what quadrant you're in. In this case we had to rotate uh, 
uh, 180. And so we get 239.03. All right, so um, back to this whole arctan, tan inverse, all this business right here. Your calculator will only give you answers in the first and fourth quadrant per tangent. These are called the principal values. Principal values are basically you'll get every possible outcome for tangent inverse in quadrants one and four, um, and so it only spits out answers between one and four. So depending on what quadrant your answer lies in, you might have to add or subtract, or I guess add pi to get to that angle. So uh, the arctan gives you just one answer. That's basically what the calculator spits out. So in general, uh, if we're going from rectangular x, y coordinates over to polar coordinates, uh, it, the way we do this that we just found out that we looked at was to get r theta the r, we're going to do the square root of x squared plus y squared. This just comes from the Pythagorean theorem that we used. And then to get the theta, we did the inverse tangent of y over x. And then, like we saw in the example we were doing, uh, we're going to, if this is in quadrants 2 or 3, in quadrants 2 or 3, we're going to add pi or add 180. I think we, we did it in radius or in degrees, so we'll add 180. But depending on if you're doing radians or degrees, uh, you'd either add 180 or add pi to get that because the, like we said, the theta that your calculator gives you is the principal value. So that is how to convert from polar to rectangular.